Hi guys, in this tutorial um, I'm basically going to show you how to achieve uh, this twisted torus shape with uh, interwoven Voronoi holes. Um, looks rather complex, but it's as you're going to see it's very easy to achieve. Um, I'm using 3ds Max 2012. Um, you'll be able to follow along as long as you have 3ds Max 2010 or higher. Um, this isn't going to require any any additional uh, plugins or add-ons, but you will need uh, access to the graphite modeling ribbon. All right, so this is the object we're looking to get. Um, you know, this could be something perhaps useful for jewelry modeling. Uh, uh, jewelry and you know like a bracelet or an earring um, some some sort of pendant um, so I'll show you how to get to this uh, let's start now all right so let me reset the scene here um, first thing we're going to do is bring up our extended primitives and we're going to insert a torus knot into the scene now you'll notice my scene is set to uh, model in centimeters, but I'm not going to follow any uh, strict real-world modeling uh, in real-world units here. I'm just going to arbitrarily uh, show you the steps needed to create this object. And, uh, you know, if you wanted to uh, follow along and do it later on in, in real-world units, you know, you can worry about the measurements and stuff at that point. But uh, for speed's sake, we're not going to worry about that here. Okay, so... Um, I'm, I'm bringing a torus knot into the scene, but uh, uh, while this probably looks familiar to most Max users, we're going to switch it from the base knot version to the circle version. Alright, so just click on the circle tab there, and um, this is what you'll get. And we, we'll adjust the radius a little bit here on both parts. And, to, and we're going to eyeball it to it's, it's about the thickness that we want. All right, so I'm going to, I'm thinking that looks pretty good right there. Okay, and um, we're going to change the number of sides to six. And we're going to twist it three times, so three twist revolutions. All right, and this is what you should end up with. Okay, let me just change our... Uh, uh, let me see here. Let me just change our material really quickly on this object so you can better see it in the viewport. All right. So, all right. So here we are. Um, again, it's it's just a six-sided uh, torus circle, um, and we've set it to three twist revolutions. All right. Now at this point we're done with the parametrics uh, of the model, so you could uh, go ahead and collapse that to an editable poly. All right, and then we'll switch to well we'll switch to uh, face mode here, and what we're going to do to start off is just to select every other face loop around the object, so every other strip around the object of faces and go ahead and delete those all right so what we're left with now are just uh, three interwoven uh, strips of polygons okay and the next step is to go ahead and select all of those all right while still in phase mode and we're going to create a like a border edge around all of these very quickly by uh, just implementing the inset tool. Um, we'll keep it set to group. All right, and I'm just going to eyeball it at this point. Uh, that looks about good. So that's about the thickness I want the uh, the edges between the Vernoy holes. All right, so that's where we'll go here, and I'll just uh, accept that. Okay. Now, with the, uh, the faces still selected, we'll go ahead and detach, and we're going to detach it as a totally separate object. All right, so not as a clone, not as an element, um, as a new object entirely. All right, and then we'll go ahead and exit uh, face mode, 
and as you can see at this point now we have two completely separate objects in the scene which is what we want at this point all right so now what we're going to do is we'll uh, select our new object here and uh, we'll enter into edge mode all right and we need to build some uh, some more resolution in, in this object so um, what we'll do you know instead of subdividing it and uh, and doing it that way we're just going to select uh, um, select an edge and we'll go ahead and ring that selection and we'll go and select another edge on the other strip and ring it and then finally on the third one do the same so we've ringed all of those interior edges all right and we'll go ahead and then connect with uh, three segments okay so now this is the result of that all right and um, so the next step is to go ahead into the graphite modeling ribbon generate topology and we're going to use the hive procedural topology okay this one up here in the right hand uh, top right hand corner there all right called hive and uh, if you mouse over it you'll see that the, it says it requires one edge to be selected and that is so that it could uh, evaluate the uh, the direction of edge flow and give you a, uh, a result based on that so uh, let's select one of these uh, vertical edges all right on this uh, on this uh, band of faces and click hive and as you can see it has transformed those edges into a hive uh, pattern okay but uh, this isn't the direction we want to go okay I mean maybe maybe you'll want to experiment with this later but for now this is not the direction we want to go so undo that and select one of the uh, the horizontal edges and click hive and this is actually more like the pattern we want to achieve here okay so um, let's do that with every with each of uh, all three of these uh, strips so select another horizontal edge on the second strip and click on the uh, procedural topology and then again on the third one all right so we have all three of them now converted to that hive uh, topology all right and we're now done with that panel so we can close it out okay and uh, we can go into face mode and with all of the faces selected we're going to do another inset operation except this time we will uh, will inset by polygon all right so uh, let me zoom in here just slightly so that you can see we're just going to inset by polygon very slightly um, to create the width of our uh, our uh, our holes in there so um, just inset slightly ever so slightly and um, accept that all right so then you're left with this and go ahead and delete the interior faces leaving you leaving us with a uh, uh, a grid like structure here okay of, of that hive topology all right so we have our our grid here of hexagons okay so this is uh, this is the result so far okay now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and reattach the second object uh, and, and combine them so uh, go ahead and click on attach and then just touch the second object and um, and that's it now these are both uh, attached as one object and we can verify that just by uh, translating it it translates as one one object however it's not uh, it's 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 not welded together um, there's still overlapping vertices at the borders of, of each object this this hasn't welded them yet so uh, in order to do that what we're going to do is just apply a vertex weld and uh, when you first apply it depending on the threshold um, you might get uh, a funky result like this where uh, all of your edges are, are suddenly welded together and you have holes in it and everything don't worry about that um, it's just uh, uh, that we have to reduce the threshold slightly 
All right, so reduce the threshold until you see a clean result here. Um, now, if we went all the way down to zero, it would proxim it would not do any welding. Okay, zero is no tolerance. Okay, so none of the uh, none of the overlapping vertices would be welded here. However, we're going to increase that slightly. All right, now we've increased it, and we see that we're having a proximity weld happen here on vertices we do not want it to occur. So once that occurs, we will back it off a couple steps, and and this is uh, this is probably fine to have all of the overlapping vertices should now be welded together as expected. Okay, and you, once once you've done that. You can go ahead and just collapse that. All right. Now we have a uh, a solid object, or actually, it's not an it's not a manifold object yet. This is a solid surface. Both of these are attached now, um, but it's it's still a one-sided surface. It's not a a manifold object yet. Um, that'll be our next step: is to uh, apply a shell modifier. And that will give it thickness, as you can see. All right. Now it doesn't matter if you're using inner or outer amounts. Um, we'll just re you can go either direction, but uh, in this case we'll just reduce the outer amount until we have a, a desired thickness for this object. All right. And I think this is uh, this is pretty good right here. I don't want to go too thick with it, so and I don't want to go too thin either, so I think that's a good thickness right there. Okay, so uh, you can go a little more or less. It, it's just personal preference, but uh, you want to have some thickness to it. All right, so that that looks good to me. All right, now at this point, there's no reason to keep the uh, the shell modifier parametric either, so we'll go ahead and collapse that down. And once you do that, it converts it automatically to an editable mesh. We'll bring back we'll bring back our editable poly just by converting it back. Okay, so now we're back to continue uh, some operations here. All right, so now the next step before we uh, before we go ahead and subdivide is uh, and and this is a this is an interesting object as it is. I mean. <clears throat> You could just uh, play around with it from this uh, point if you wanted to. Uh, bevel some of these edges, and and you can call it a day, and it would be an interesting uh, object. Um, but we want to uh, we want to take it a little further. So what we're going to do here is connect. Uh, we're going to make an interior portion here and connect it uh, so that it it will be a solid object. Um, so to do that, what we'll do is go into face mode, and we'll select all of these faces, all right, and then we'll select all of these faces, and uh, I think we'll, yeah, we'll perform a bridge operation there, all right, and then we'll do the the, the same thing with the uh, the next set of open, the next set uh, that make up the hopes that make up the. Uh, uh, the next um, flow of edges here. We'll just loop select those two edges and bridge them. And then finally this last one and bridge them. Okay, so now we have a solid object with these uh, holes. And once we subdivide it, all right, and we'll use two iterations. <coughs> You could see the result, and uh, there's our object that we were looking for. All right, and this could be, like I said, this could be a, uh, you know, this could be a bracelet. Uh, this could be, you know, we can create a chain and make it some kind of pendant or an earring, you know. And you can get uh, you can get more experimental with this uh, on your own if you want to. Uh, uh, when instead of doing the bridge on all of the uh, faces going around the loops, you could uh, dot select them and just create uh, a bridge between every other face. Uh, that would be interesting. Um, 
a whole variety of things you can you can do here. Um, you can leave it on. You know, you don't have to subdivide it if you want to maintain the the hexagonal uh, grid faces in there or openings, I should say. Okay, um, but I kind of like the uh, and we'll subdivide it twice. I kind of like that Voronoi uh, whole structure, that organic look to it. So that's why I'm doing it that way with uh, with a Turbo Smooth modifier. Okay, so um, so that's how to get this shape, and uh, that's it's painless. It's it's fairly easy. I mean, once you get the the technique down, it, it, it you can do this in probably you know probably under four minutes easily. You know, I mean, it's you can get through it very fast, and um, you know, so uh, it's just fun to experiment with uh, with the different techniques here using some standard primitives that come with the uh, package and just some of the graphite tools. Well, anyway, I hope you enjoyed uh, this tutorial, and uh, I'm going to make a few more like this. Uh, you know, experimenting with some different shapes that, uh, you know, that look complex but are, you know, quite easy to achieve once you, uh, once you know the techniques behind them. So, all right. Uh, thanks again for joining, and I look forward to uh, sharing more videos with you. See you next time.